Admitting powerlessness over our problems is extremely difficult. And putting God at the forefront of our lives in the face of those problems is even more difficult still. Welcome to Breaking the Cycle. My name is Alan Hyde and I'm your host. I ask you to join me as we unravel stories of recovery, shift perspectives, and inspire change in those who are seeking answers and solution. Let's get into it. Hey guys, today we're going to be reading from a book called Courage to Change, One Day at a Time in Al-Anon. For those unfamiliar, Al-Anon is a 12-step program for friends and family members of alcoholics. You may relate to some of the information shared here today, and uh, if you do, I'm glad you're here to hear it. So here goes the reading for today. Sometimes when I'm unhappy with my situation, I feel that God is punishing me. Once again, I've lost my image of a loving God and need to recover it. It helps to call my sponsor, who reminds me that God is not a terrorist. I read Al-Anon literature and go to extra meetings. Mostly, I walk beside the river and talk with God about how afraid I am. I watch the water and thank God for the good things in my life. Al-Anon recovery, the gift of the 12 steps, creativity, and the joy I have in expressing it. My loving Al-Anon family. After I've talked through, I sit and wait until I feel God's healing touch reassuring me, drying my tears. The funny thing is that after I'm through those hard times, I never truly remember the pain. What I remember is the sunshine on the water, the peace of the moment, the love of my higher power wrapping around me as tangibly as the sunshine. The pain is gone, but the increased trust in my higher power remains. Today's reminder. When faced with a difficult or painful situation, I can remember that a loving God is always here for me, always available as a source of comfort, guidance, and peace. No one is alone if they've come to believe in a power greater than themselves. I don't know about you guys, but this one really speaks to me. Um, I came into program in my own personal recovery uh, with a belief in God. You know, I had a foundation of a belief in a higher power greater than myself. My problem was that I I didn't know how to turn my will and my life over to the care of that higher power. You know, and and if you don't like the word God, I'll, I'll interject that now. If you don't like the word God, you can use any word you like for it. The concept here is just a power greater than yourself. And the reason I bring that up here as well is because in the beginning of my recovery and prior to my recovery... Um, I, I was in my own mind, my own higher power. I made all my own decisions. I was generally successful in the things that I pursued and, uh, obtained a lot of accomplishments. See on paper, you know, I, I had things figured out, but in reality I was miserable. You know, I grew up, um, in generational alcoholism. It's afflicted my family as far back as I can look and it caught up with me. You know, as I imagine it caught up with many others of, in my family, uh, for some reason I was ready to admit powerlessness and seek recovery. And in the beginning of that, the hardest challenge for me was hitting my knees and accepting the love, peace, and guidance part of today's reading. See, I knew there was a higher power in my mind, right? I trusted, you know, some concept of it. I'm not, I'm not uh, here to enter into any philosophical debates about is there a God or isn't there. I'm just sharing. Uh, I had a sense of faith in my own personal journey, um, but even with that faith, faith, I, I didn't, um, I didn't know how to trust it. You know, see, how could things be bad in my life, in my family situation? And, uh, trust that God's going to take care of that. You know, it was really a process of admitting to myself and, and to others in my life that it wasn't up to me anymore. I didn't have to carry that burden. And I've worked with scores of people for, for those who don't know, I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist, and I've been one for over a decade. And I've worked with so many people walking in the same process and whether it's the alcoholic Uh, who's struggling with substances or the family member who's struggling watching their loved one slowly deteriorate their lives. What I, what I've come to see is that it's, it's the loving guidance 
an acceptance of a higher power that sets those people free. And I can speak to it because personally it set me free. When I decided finally to hit my knees and say, Hey God, deliver me from these self-seeking and selfish behaviors. Help me understand my own denial. Help me understand what powerless means in my life. And also help me spread this message to those who are still in pain. The answers started to come. I, I no longer hit my knees and prayed to God for, uh, you know, to have the nice car, to be able to afford the nice house, to, um, you know, really anything for myself that see, those are all my prayers prior. I would pray like, God, please, uh, remove any bad situations. And also, Hey, you know, I'd really like this new car, you know, or, Hey, I'd really like to be able to buy a house. Can you help me out with that? I asked for things. Uh, and that wasn't part of God's design for my life. Uh, part of God's design for my life was to give back, to share information, um, to be humble. You know, and that, that was a struggle for me. See, I thought I knew everything. I didn't, I didn't know what humility meant. I didn't know that humility meant admitting that I was powerless over the alcoholics in my life. I didn't know that humility meant, you know, not being a know-it-all. See, I read a ton of books. I had a bunch of information. I had all the right education. I went to prestigious schools and I didn't know anything. You know, at the end of all of that, the reality is, is like some people may hear that and they think like, oh, well, you must know some things. It's like, yeah, you know, I, I know a thing or two about psychology, but the reality is this is the more I've learned in my life, the more I realize I don't know. And the more I talk to other good people who also admit that they don't know, the more my life changes and it gets better. And I'd encourage you if you're, if you're reaching out for this information or hearing this podcast and you know, you're thinking, Hey, I, I need some support. I want you to know you're not alone. You know, there are plenty of us that are just like me and just like you who are seeking support. They're looking for answers and there is a solution. Part of that solution is, well, it's outlined in our 12 steps, right? We have to admit powerlessness over alcohol is the literature, but really what that means is we have to admit powerlessness over the problems in our lives that are reoccurring and, and, creating barriers for us in our lives. And then once we've done that, like the reading was talking about today is we, we've got to come to a clear, reasonable place in our mind to connect with a power greater than ourselves. And I'll tell you this, you know, whatever it is you believe about a higher power in the world, it's a very loving and unconditional force in our lives. You know, you can bring whatever shame, guilt, or messed up things that you think you've done in your life to the feet of that higher power, and you're going to be accepted and you are redeemable and your life can be turned over, right? So no matter where you are in the world today, wherever you are listening to this, maybe you're headed to work or, you know, you're headed home from work or you're sitting in the comfort of your home just know that no matter what you've done, you know, we've all done bad things. We've all messed up. We've all made mistakes. We're just human. All right. And the way to free ourselves from that is by connecting with a power greater than ourselves. And I don't know what that means for you. I don't know what it needs to look like, but I'll, I'll share with you this. You know, when I am having a hard time, I go through a series of, of solutions that have been taught to me. First, I call somebody reasonable. See, if I'm spinning in my head and making up all kinds of situations that are bad, right? Like the ways that I want to control the outcomes. Hey, you know, uh, this person is misbehaving and I, and I want to tell them a thing or two, right? Because, well, I, I care, right? I don't want them to screw up. So I'm going to tell them the way that they should do this thing or the way that they're going to avoid consequences, right? That all sounds wonderful, right? It all sounds like I'm being helpful, but the reality is no adult wants to be helped, right? They want to be able to do things the way they want to do them. And they're, they're not asking my opinion. And see the old me, when that person wasn't asking my opinion, but I thought I knew the answer, I'd get resentful, right? I get pissed off. I wouldn't know how to handle the situation. And so today what's been taught to me is when I feel that urge, uh, to control a situation or, or, uh, give my input, I, I pause for a moment. I take a deep breath and I call somebody reasonable. In this case, it's often my sponsor and I've grown a very, uh, deep relationship with this man. And I call him and, and I talk it through and, you know, we, 
we come to solutions together. And, and oftentimes it's like, all I needed to do was get it off my chest to see that I was being unreasonable, that I don't know any better for anybody else's life than sometimes I do for my own, you know? And what he reminds me often is, uh, you know, pray, pray about it. And in the beginning, I, I, if I had been told by one more person to just pray about my problems, my head was going to explode. I didn't want to accept those things. I didn't know how to accept those things. I thought I could figure things out on my own. I didn't need anybody else. The reality was I was alone. I was irritable, restless, and discontent. I had nobody to turn to prior to recovery, and I had no idea what I was doing. I didn't know how to get my loved ones to stop using substances. I didn't know how to get them to love me condi uh, unconditionally the way that I know every human deserves, right? I didn't, I didn't know how to get those things, right? I knew how to try to force them, right? Hey, maybe get another accomplishment under my belt, maybe seek some more education, maybe uh, win a trophy or two, and I'll receive the love in this world that I know I'm deserved, right? But that, see, that was my entitlement. I wanted love and I was going to demand it through my actions. The reality is, is love was freely given. I just wasn't looking in the right places. The love that I needed in my life to heal wasn't going to come from imperfect people, right? It wasn't going to come from people who are still struggling in their journeys. It was going to come from God. And much like the reading was talking about today, you know, we take those quiet moments to connect with our higher power and all of a sudden, we're reminded of the loving nature of our higher power, the peace, love, and guidance that's available to all of us. And when I, when I talk with my sponsor about it, you know, I'll go through all of the things that I want to say, or, you know, the ways that I'm feeling or the things I want to do knowing, right. That full, well, probably all of them are a bad idea, you know, and, and that I need to pump the brakes. And he often reminds me, uh, to keep my mouth shut. Right. And we have a funny saying together and I'm about to cuss. So if you don't like cussing, you know, uh, plug your ears, but he always shares with me, never miss a golden opportunity to shut the fuck up. And I needed that so much in my life when I first came into recovery, because I would run my mouth. I would just talk and talk and talk. And I thought I had all the answers. I thought I knew what was best, but that that's not God's plan. God doesn't want for us to be the person that has the answers for everybody, right? That's a, that's a burden. You know, it's a lot of pressure to put on a person. It's a lot of pressure to put on yourself. So if you're listening today, I'd encourage you, you know, if you're relating to some of the information that, that I'm sharing or, or even just a little bit like, Hey, you know, I, I do have an alcoholic in my life too, or maybe I am an alcoholic and um, you know, or have an unmanageable problem with a substance and, and I need God. I would, I would encourage you to continue to listen to these episodes, reach out to people who are uh, seeking the same kind of support and get connected. There are good people out there who are turning their lives over to a higher power and it's freeing them of obsessions and compulsions. It's freeing them of desperation. It's freeing them of the chains and the bonds of pain that persist in cycles of the family disease of alcoholism. I've watched it both personally in my recovery, and I've seen it thousands of times in my clinical practice. Maybe you're not convinced and that's okay. The only thing that we can ask in that case, what we say in recovery is to keep coming back. You know, if there was even one piece of the, the reading or, or some of the nonsense that I shared afterwards in my own story, in my own experience, uh, then I would, I would encourage you maybe, Hey, listen to another episode, you know, uh, get the book and read it yourself, you know, go through it. It breaks it down in uh, daily bite-sized readings, it takes a minute to read it. You know, if you read a little slower, it takes a couple minutes. No, no problem. You can get the audio version. I'll have those links on my website, but I would encourage you to seek the support. You know, I, I would encourage you to consider what these words mean when, when we talk about turning our lives over to a higher power and experiencing the love and the peace and the serenity that comes with that. I'm not going to tell you it's easy. I'm not even going to tell you that hearing the word God is easy for some of you. Uh, what I will tell you is that if you uh, pursue this information and, and you need that support, the support will find you. It's there. There are good people 
anywhere, you know, in this, in this, in this process that are going to wrap their arms around you, give you a hug or not, if you don't like hugs and encourage you to keep coming back, they're going to share their experience, strength, and hope. And and you're going to find support. You're, you're not alone in the struggles of uh, desperation and loneliness that come with being in, in the cycle of addiction with a loved one. And I, I'd like to clarify, you know, both personally and clinically, the cycle of addiction doesn't mean that you yourself have a problem with addiction or, or an unmanageable problem with substances. The cycle of addiction affects us all, right? It's why it's called the family disease. We love the people in our lives who are struggling with an addiction. And we may want to save them, help them, or help them find a cure. But you didn't cause it, you can't control it, and you can't cure it. The only release for that person is for them to turn their lives over to God. And the same solution exists for us. We have to get out of their way. And when we do, we find a loving higher power that restores us to sanity and allows us to live a life worth living. It's a true freedom and a, and a breaking of the bondage of the chains of the family disease of alcoholism. And I would encourage anyone and everyone to continue reaching out for support. I know it's helped me in abundance and I imagine that it's going to help you. If you have any other questions or, uh, you know, you liked the information, uh, there's, there's going to be plenty more episodes on these topics and, you know, continued readings from multiple pieces of literature from Al-Anon and AA and, and other forms of support and psychological and mental health support that I'll be reading and sharing on this podcast. So continue to stay tuned in and uh, we'll just keep on rolling through. All righty, guys, have a good day. I'd like to thank you for listening to this episode of Breaking the Cycle. If you're looking for more information regarding the topics that I discuss in this podcast, jump over to alanhyde.com. The website will be in the description. If you're looking to get involved, make a donation, or to get your hands on some cool Breaking the Cycle merchandise, that will also be available at the website, and we encourage your support. Without your support, this podcast would not be possible. So I just want to thank you, and as always, bless your heart.